I noticed a peculiar aspect of my personality back when I had more of an active social life. I've also observed this phenomenon in others. Let me know if you have as well. I call it chosen helplessness. In psychological research, there's a concept known as learned helplessness, which is well documented and studied. It's often used in the context of training animals or manipulating people, especially by institutions of power. However, looking in the shadow of this more recognized phenomenon is another dimension that I believe deserves more attention. Chosen helplessness. This intriguing behavior becomes particularly apparent in the drama of interpersonal relationships. So what exactly is it? At its core, chosen helplessness is the conscious decision to relinquish one's agency and responsibility in the presence of capable others. It's a form of voluntary surrender, where tasks, decisions, and roles are willingly relinquished, often leaving a reservoir of untapped potential. While learned helplessness typically stems from trauma or external coercive pressures, chosen helplessness is entirely voluntary and shaped by our perceptions of those around us. Perhaps it's rooted in the human inclination to take the path of least resistance. Here are some real-life examples of chosen helplessness to help get the idea across. At work, imagine a team where one member eagerly voices their opinions, not necessarily because they are more skilled, but because others choose to remain silent, allowing the loudest voice to take the lead, thus dominating decision-making. This also happens in social gatherings where passive listeners fade into the background, allowing the loudest voices to dominate the conversation. This can lead to missed opportunities for diverse conversations and result in a false sense of collective consensus that may not reflect reality. In family dynamics, children, too, can succumb to chosen helplessness. They might heavily rely on a parent for tasks they could easily do themselves, or let an older sibling dictate their reality, hindering their personal growth and potentially leading to a persistence of bullying or abuse. Being aware of this can help a parent make conscious decisions about letting the child learn how to take over tasks that they once relied on the parent to do. Even in our personal lives, we often harbor aspirations like learning a new skill or pursuing a hobby. However, we may consciously choose helplessness by resorting to excuses and procrastination. We might convince ourselves that there's insufficient time or that we lack the necessary resources, all the while neglecting the small but feasible steps we could take toward our goals. This inclination toward chosen helplessness could even lead to mediocrity. I often wonder if we refrain from putting in our best effort because by not trying our hardest, we protect our ego from the potential toll of failure. Meh, I know I could do better, so it wasn't really me that failed. Consider our approach to health. Many of us prefer to visit a doctor and seek prescription solutions rather than engaging and regularly taking care of our bodies. We'd rather treat our body as something that is not us, but that we are imprisoned to or mere passengers of, with no say in the matter. And what about our finances? Is it truly impossible to save money? Yet we consistently opt for that daily latte while conveniently turning a blind eye to the needs of our future selves. We willingly choose the comfort of immediate gratification over the security of financial responsibility in the future. Perhaps a more common example can be seen in the context of home life. Let's take cohabiting or married partners as an example. In such relationships, it's not uncommon for one partner to assume responsibility for all household tasks while the other, perfectly capable of contributing, remains passive simply allowing the eager partner to handle everything. While this division of labor may initially seem practical, assuming the passive one is the provider, it often leads to an imbalance that festers resentment over time. I've even observed that this growing resentment can transform the willing helper into someone who becomes toxically helpful. This is the person who continues to perform their tasks but accompanies them with a constant stream of complaints about their difficulty. You might hear audible sighs each time they encounter a piece of clothing on the floor, or witness dishes being washed with exaggerated force, broadcasting loudly the work being done. Eventually, this individual may resort to self-sabotage by intentionally neglecting their responsibilities until they accumulate to a point where the burden becomes overwhelming. This can culminate in a final meltdown, ironically, transforming the once helpful partner into the helpless one. Why does all of this matter? Because the truth is, many of us are actively choosing helplessness in almost every facet of our lives. This choice, whether driven by fear, convenience, bitterness, laziness, or a reluctance to confront our own potential, can limit our growth, hinder our relationships, and prevent us from reaching our fullest potential. 
Recognizing and challenging these patterns can be a catalyst for positive change and personal empowerment. Recognizing this in ourselves and others can help foster balance and mutually beneficial relationships. It can reshape how we see and nurture potential in others, bring about new and better leaders, and lead to strategies that restore balance and improve communication. Once you see it, you realize there is nothing subtle or hidden about this all too common human behavior, and yet the field of psychology has not tackled it. Why? I propose that we all take a moment to self-reflect on the ways in which we choose to be helpless and ask ourselves, am I truly helpless? Let's engage more actively in our roles and capacities. One of my favorite quotes is by Matthew McConaughey, where he said, become more involved and less impressed. I think that sums it up quite well. Get involved with your life. Nobody is coming to save you. Nobody is going to discover you. Nobody is going to pull you up from the trench you're in. Nobody is coming. It's all on you.